walking together to start our service today. It's on holy ground. We are standing. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Before you're seated, let's shake hands with a visitor. I think we got a few in the house or some of those close by you. And you can be seated. Good morning and welcome to the Dallas Church of God. If you're visiting with us, we're thrilled to have you with us today. We're very proud that you got to be here. Uh, please make yourself at home and enjoy the service today. Um, I had a few announcements that I wanted to make um, just real quickly. We have uh, some outreach announcements. On the 26th of April, um, there's going to be an ice cream social. Uh, it's an outreach uh, activity uh, Sherry Canterbury put together. And it's, um, it says, Ice Cream Social, Friday, April 26th, and Teddy Bears. We will leave the church at 6 p.m., so be here before 6, or you might get left. Um, one thing I do want to make sure of, Sister Wisnett's going to have Bible study tomorrow night in the fellowship hall. Am I right? So the pastor's council meeting will not be tomorrow night. It will be Tuesday night. So if you're on the pastor's council, we will meet in the fellowship hall Tuesday night at 7 o'clock. Bible study will be tomorrow in the fellowship hall. Uh, we have a ton of birthdays. I haven't seen Reba Helms in a while. She hasn't been able to be with us. So, um, Justin, if you're here, tell your grandma happy birthday. Um, Scott Goodman, Tommy Goodman, they're having birthdays. And Lukey Alton is having a birthday on April the 17th. So, Kim, Renee, y'all tell Luke happy birthday. Um, Caitlin Wilson is having a birthday, and wonderful Lori Williams, who is my Sunday school secretary, she's having a birthday. Happy birthday, Lori. Um, a couple of youth announcements. Friday the 19th, um, they're having a youth conference at uh, Liberty in, uh, or in Clover. So um, I think the youth from our church is going. So meet here at the church that night at 6 o'clock on Friday the 19th. Uh, Sunday the 28th, they're going to have a day where they stay in the Family Life Center all day after morning service. So Sunday the 28th, they're staying after morning service into evening service in the Family Life Center for lunch, fellowship, and games. Um, one thing is happening next Saturday, and do not forget, there is a special event happening here next Saturday at 4 o'clock. It is the wedding of Sidney Snipes and Josh Kinlaw. So we're going to have to start practicing saying Sidney Kinlaw. So we have to practice that name. But next Saturday at 4 o'clock is their wedding, so please remember that. Um, May the 1st, we're having a hot dog sale as a fundraiser for our church. 
So um, that, that is a Wednesday evening. They're going to be selling hot dog plates all day long. So if you uh, take orders at your work or if you know some people that would like to order a hot dog plate that day, please write that down. And I'm assuming give that to you. Am I right? Okay. Or Martha. So that means or Martha. So give that to Martha. So I took, I understood what that meant. Um, but what you need to do is signify if you want onions or no onions or what, if there's any special orders, please just make sure that and we'll get those plates made for you. So um, I think that is it for the announcements that I had. How many people got to come to Sunday school today? We finished up a series of lessons today uh, called Principles for Christian Living, and today was the one about living victoriously in Christ. That, to me, is the theme of the Christian experience. If we can't live victoriously and know that Jesus Christ has saved us from our sins and helps us to live victoriously over the things that we face, then we have a miserable life. But when we know that we live in a victorious life because we live for a victorious Savior, that is the best thing we could ever experience in life. That's, that's what Christianity is all about. Next Sunday, we start a new series called Fruit of the Spirit. And I know a lot of people know what the fruit of the spirits are, but be here next Sunday for Sunday school. Uh, we love you. Brother Castle. We got a lot going on, don't we? Praise the Lord. Did y'all come ready to have church today? I hope you come ready to worship the Lord. That's the main reason that we are here. I want to uh, go to the Lord in prayer this morning, and we've got a lot of people that are out sick, and we've got a lot of requests that have came in. But how many know that God is able? How many know that He knows the need before we even ask it of Him? Um, I'd ask for you to pray for my mom. She's going to be having surgery uh, here coming up this month, and uh, she's going to be having surgery on her back. I had a uh, message yesterday uh, to pray for Jerry Helton. He's in need of a healing. Uh, Deborah Hall, she's an online viewer, and we need to pray for her today, and, and I'm going to anoint some prayer cloths. We're going to send those out. Um, also, I'd like for you to remember Brother and Sister Alonzo. Brother Alonzo really needs a healing touch, and Sister Alonzo needs strength. She's doing her best to care for him. So. If you all uh, would, maybe just sometime this week, maybe just call them, check on them, just encourage them a little bit in the Lord. I know that they would appreciate it. I'd ask for you to remember uh, Joe Tony. He's not feeling well today. Um, also remember Brother Ray Loftus. Uh, he's going to be having another uh, surgery uh, coming up this month, I believe April 23rd. And he really needs a miracle. He is a just a wonderful man of God. And I believe that God can reach down and touch him. So would you just lift him up today in prayer as well? Um, I also had a request for Aaron Canterbury, if you would pray for him. He's had a recent cancer diagnosis. But how many know that the God that we serve is a lot greater than cancer? Amen. He's able to deliver. And I'd like for you to pray for Linda Burnell. Also, uh, Scott Moss, I had a request for him to pray for him. Also, remember Brother Jeff Bryant, he is sick and needs a touch. And also, uh, Todd Walker, if you all would remember those requests. Does anybody else anywhere in the church uh, have a request anywhere? Yes, let's remember that need. Okay, let's remember that need. Okay, let's remember that need. Anybody else got a spoken request? Okay, got a special. All right, we I know we got another special in the back. God knows all about. Any anybody else? All right. How about we just uh if anybody needs a prayer cloth, can we do this? Can we do something a little different today? I like different, don't you? Well, praise the Lord. I said I like different. I am different. Y'all figuring that out, ain't you? We've got a lot of people that have needs in their life, and I'm going to anoint some prayer cloths today. All of you that are able to, would you, would you join me at this altar and let's just come together and let's anoint these prayer cloths and let's pray over these needs. Let's invite Jesus into this service today. How many know that he's, he's going to be where he's welcome? Amen. All of you that will and that can, if you would come down here and let's, let's anoint these prayer cloths together and let's just bind together as a church for these needs. I believe God can supply the need according to his riches and glory. He's rich this morning. Hallelujah.
If you're here this morning because the Lord has brought you here, can you give the Lord a good clap of praise? Let's worship the Lord with this choir as they come and sing. Glory to God.
with the wrong that you have done. Just come on home to Jesus. You know he's the cleansing one. Well, in his arms he'll hold you and you've just begun to live. to be forgiven. Amen. Glory to God. We praise the Lord today for everything that he does for us. We're going to worship the Lord this morning with our giving, and if we could ask our ushers to come. How many know that God loves a cheerful giver? How many know that God always blesses us and gives back what we give? I believe you can cast your bread upon the water, and I believe you can find it many days thereafter. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. All right, we're going to ask uh, Brother Ivy, would you care to pray over our offering for us this morning?
Amen. Thank you for your giving. I mean, it's thankful for everything that the Lord does for you. Amen. Amen. Deep, deep laugh. Please. I will when I get a little bit better at it. Maybe tonight. Deep, can you play deep laugh? I love this song. I love the words of this song. And I'm not a very good singer, which y'all figured that out. But I love to sing. And I like to make a joyful noise unto the Lord. And that's all that's important. Amen. This is, this is my prayer, and I hope it's your prayer today, too. Lord, I don't want to do one thing on my own.
you sing it with me? Oh, Lord, I want to be what you want me to be. And, Lord, I want to do the things you want me to do. And, Lord, help me stay. Thank you, Jesus, for all that you do for each and every one of us. Amen. I believe that you can know the will of God. I believe he spells it out for us, and sometimes it takes people a good long time to find it. But when you find it, ain't it good? And that's my prayer is that, God, may I stay in the center of your will. May I not err from the truth. May I try to do my best to be faithful. And I believe if you'll be faithful to God, I believe he'll prove his faithfulness over and over and over and over again to you. Amen. If you have your Bibles today, would you turn with me to the book of Exodus, chapter number 32, and we're going to read verse number 1. Now, I'm going to tell you this morning that I probably won't preach uh, get to the very, I guess, uh, place in the Scripture really where I want to be at. I want to try to build a foundation uh, this morning and maybe try to finish this up tonight or maybe in the next few services. I don't know how God's going to lead me. But I just, uh, I just want to talk to you this morning about leadership, and I want to talk to you about how each of us are called to be leaders. You are, you are children of light. You are the salt and the light of this earth. And the Lord has called each and every single one of us into leadership. You're called into discipleship. And you are called to go out here and to share the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ that has the power to save people, to set them free, and deliver them from the torments of the enemy. Can I tell you that we need to be encouraged and we need to be about the Father's business in these last days? We don't have time for division. We don't have time for separation. We don't have time to let things in life that does so easily beset us. We don't have time for anything that would hinder us in our work in God. But we need to be constantly about the Father's business. And sometimes with leadership, one good quality I'm going to say of leadership is patience. Sometimes we need to be patient, and we need to patiently wait upon the Lord. How many know that when you wait upon the Lord, good things happen in the end? And I'm just believing with all certainty that God has got to work. He has given each and every single one of us, uh, we, sh we share the vision of reaching the harvest from the Dallas Church of God. We know that we just as the Dallas Church of God are just a small part of the church or the great big family of God, but we're being our best to do faithful and to be faithful unto the Lord and to the kingdom and build his kingdom, and we share that vision of going out here and reaching that harvest. Can I tell you that Jesus declared in the scripture that the harvest was ripe, it was plenteous. He said, but the labors are few. And he said, pray to the Lord of the harvest that he may send forth labors into the field. I'm here today to tell you that the harvest is ripe. And we've got people that are all around us. There may be people inside this church that yet that we still need to minister to, that yet we still may need to reach. They still may need to know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. They may need to come to Jesus today and, and accept him as Savior and let him forgive them of all their sins. 
Can I tell you today that God is faithful through it all? He's never seen the righteous forsaken, the psalmist said, nor his seed begging of any bread. God is faithful, and those that will endure unto the end, the Bible declares the same shall be saved. We need to endure today, and we're going to have to endure some hardness, and this task ahead is going to be laborious, and it's going to be hard, and it's going to be trying. But how many know with God's help that we can do all things through Christ? Hallelujah. Shoo. We can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth us. Exodus chapter number 32, verse number 1. And the Bible said, And when the people saw that Moses delayed to come down out of the mount, the people gathered themselves together unto Aaron and said unto him, Up, make us gods, which shall go before us. For as for Moses, this man that brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we wot not what is become of him. Can I tell you something today? That Moses was exactly in the place that God had called him to be. He was on the mountain in a meeting with him. God was literally, if you will read in Exodus chapter 31, verse number 18, you will read about how that the hand of the Lord, the finger of God, came down and wrote on those tablets for Moses. Can I tell you today that sometimes we, we as God's people, we get so impatient. And in our impatience, we will sometimes get off track and off course to where God wants us to be. You can't within yourself stir up a move of God. You within yourself cannot save anyone. You within yourself cannot bring healing to any one person. But how many know that when you get on your face and you get on your knees before an almighty and an all-powerful God and you say, Lord, I want to be the vessel of honor that you have called me to be, I believe that the God of heaven can reach down and I believe he can begin to anoint you. I believe he can call you. I believe he can pour into you the things that he needs inside of you to be a light and to be a willing and a, and a vessel for him that would bring glory and honor unto his kingdom. But I'm here to this morning to declare that we cannot do it without the anointing and without the unction and with the help of God. We are useless and we are nothing without God. Jesus declared, and I'm going to let you sit down in just a minute. Jesus declared that he was the vine and we are just the branches. And he said, without me, you can do nothing. Heavenly Father, this morning as we come before you, Lord, once again, Lord, I need your help. God, I praise you today, Lord, for what we have already felt and experienced in this service. God, I praise you, Lord, that I, when I call upon you, Lord, I know that you're seated in heaven. Lord, I know that you're on your throne. I believe, Jesus, that you're seated at the right hand of the heavenly Father. And God, you're in all power and all authority. God, I just pray today, Lord, that you would anoint me and that you would help me. God, I pray, Lord, that you would touch the people, Lord, in this church. God, I pray, Lord, that you would manifest yourself in this service. God, I pray, Lord, that you would just let us today, Lord, leave this sanctuary knowing that we have heard your word and we have heard from heaven. And God, I pray today, God, that you'd anoint me and anoint the ears of your church. God, use us in these last days. And God, help us and touch your people. And Lord, we'll give you all the glory and all the praise for it. And we ask it in Jesus' name. And the Dallas Church of God said, Amen. Amen. Would you care to just turn around and shake your neighbor's hand and tell them that you love them this morning? It's good to see you. This morning as I begin to talk about leadership, can I tell you that there is great defiance toward leadership sometimes? Amen. There's great defiance toward leadership at times. And then there is some who will follow after anything and everything. Amen. Come on. You know I'm telling the truth. To lead, we've got to realize that God has got to first begin a work inside of man's heart. We've got to have the work of God begin inside of us. If we expect to lead others, we need to live a life that is pleasing before the Lord. 
And then because of the fruit that we'll have in our life, because of what God has done in our life, I believe other people around will begin to see that and we will be able to lead them to the knowledge of truth. Amen. Praise the Lord. This week, I, I, I want to tell you that I almost felt defeated. I, I, truly, I did feel defeated in a lot of ways because I left here Sunday, I felt good, and I thought, oh my goodness, I went home and then I ended up sick. And I'm going to tell you something, there's something about when you have to call service off and there's something about when you can't be in God's house, it just causes you to feel like you have been defeated. But I tell you what, all it done was make me mad. Amen. I got mad at the devil. And I've got back up here today, and I'm going to do my absolute best, and I'm going to do what God has told me to do, and I'm going to do my best to share with you what the Holy Spirit of God has spoken into my heart this week. So you just bear with me. This week, the Lord began to speak to me, and he began to tell me to preach his word in a way that will produce deliverance. And I kind of thought, well, Lord, I thought I've already been doing that. But can I tell you that we need to be instant in season and out of season. We need to reprove and rebuke with all long suffering. We need to be about the business of God and building the kingdom and doing our best to declare the word and not just to declare the word but to live the word and let the life begin to flow inside of us and let Jesus Christ begin to be that well springing up into us into everlasting life. I believe today that if we'll seek after God and if we'll say, Lord, I just desire to be in your will, I desire to do what you've called me to do. And when it comes to the point that in your life that you might feel weak and you might feel weary along the way, and hey, that's just natural, that's common uh, for us to feel the emotions and the waves of life, but you'll feel something in his gentle and his mighty and his powerful hand as he will come along through the power of the Holy Ghost. And I believe the Holy Holy Ghost can reach down today and even strengthen us. And the Holy Ghost today is a, he causes us to remember the things and to remember the word whatsoever the scripture tells us that he has taught us. Amen. Ain't you glad today that Jesus is alive and well? He's at the right hand of the Father. He's ever living, making intercession for us. He knows where we stand this morning. He knows if you walked in this sanctuary sick, he knows if you walked in here uh, bound by a life of sin. He knows if you walked in here uh, carrying a burden that is too great for you to bear. Can I tell you that Jesus is the Savior? He is Alpha. He is Omega. The Bible declares He is from everlasting to everlasting. He is the beginning. He is the end. He's the author. He's the finisher. Amen. Of our faith. He is the one that we can run to on our da days that we're down and that we're weary. We can say that He is the lily of our valley. He is the bright and He is the morning star. He is the first and he is the last. He is the one that was dead, but he stood there and he told John, the revelator, he said, behold, I am alive and I am alive forevermore and I have the keys of death and of hell. Can I tell you today that we serve a God that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all we can even ask or think of him. He is on his throne and he's ready to meet the needs and send deliverance to the people and children of God. Hallelujah. And in this life that we're living in, many in the world and even many in the church are bound by the forces of the enemy. They're bound. And I'm going to preach. I'm going to do my best to preach in a way, to preach his word that would cause deliverance to come to the captives. There's nothing more Difficult for a minister or for a, for a member of the body of Christ to deal with, I'm going to say. When you look out and you see somebody that is struggling in a life of sin, they're struggling in a life of addiction, they're struggling in a life of sickness and disease and oppression and depression. There's nothing more difficult than to look out and to see people in the situations that the enemy has caused them to be in. Can I tell you that because of sin, these things begin to happen and fall upon the shoulders of mankind. 
But can I tell you today that the blood of Jesus Christ is still able to cleanse us from all sin and forgive us of all unrighteousness. The blood of Jesus Christ has the power to redeem you. The blood of Jesus Christ has the power to save you. I believe the blood of Jesus Christ can sanctify you through the power of the Holy Ghost. I believe the blood of Jesus Christ can help you to live a holy and a pure life that is undefiled before God. I believe the blood of Jesus Christ can write your name in the Lamb's book of life. I believe the blood of Jesus Christ is something that we need to hold on to and we need to cling to and realize that had Jesus not shed his blood, that we would be lost for eternity. But I'm here today to declare, and the enemy hates this, but let me tell you something. There's something about being bought by the blood of Jesus Christ knowing that when you are redeemed that you're not redeemed with corruptible things such as gold and silver you're not redeemed by things of this world but you are redeemed by the atoning blood of Jesus Christ that was shed for you on the cross of Calvary he made a way that we can have access to God the heavenly father he made a way that we could be an heir and if an heir a joint heir to the father and join heirs with Jesus Christ he made a way for us to be saved he made a way for us to escape hell and destruction he made a way for us to live a life of victory not a life of defeat but you see the greatest weapon that the enemy uses is deception he uses deception over and over throughout the Bible we can read how Satan is the deceiver Somebody say amen. It's the character of who Satan is. He is the deceiver. And God has given me a burden. I want to say this today. God has given me a burden to take this church to another level in the Lord. Oh, yes, we need to go to another level. How many would like to go up a little bit higher and get a little bit closer to God? I'd like to go to another level, to another experience with Almighty and all-powerful God. I have a burning desire to be closer to Jesus than ever before. You see, if you look around and if you watch the news, and I, and I really don't pay much attention, but, but I have been watching what is happening over in Israel, and that should attract the attention of the entirety of the world to realize that these things are coming to pass so that prophecy and scripture can be fulfilled. Hey, listen, we're just on the very verge of eternity when Jesus is going to come back and he is going to rescue his church and call us home to be with him. And we need to be paying attention to the things that are going on around us because Jesus is coming and he's coming without notice. He's coming suddenly, and something is going to happen when he comes. The Bible says that this old corruptible is going to put on incorruption, and this mortal is going to put on immortality. The Bible said that we shall be changed, and it's going to happen in the moment of the twinkling of an eye. Amen. And we're going to make heaven our home. Ain't you glad that Jesus made a way because of what he did at Calvary? We need to be paying attention. And I want to have a relationship with God that's not going to leave me standing here when the trumpet of God sounds and the rapture of the church happens. I don't want to be sitting here having my name on the roll of the Dallas Church of God and me still living here amongst the tribulation that's going to be coming upon the earth. You imagine the seven years of tribulation, three and a half years tribulation, but three and a half years of great tribulation. Seven seals, seven vows, and seven trumpets, all the judgments of God because of those that have failed to accept Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. Can I tell you that you don't have to be left behind to suffer the judgment and the wrath that's going to be poured out upon this earth by Almighty God. But I believe today that you can know with all certainty because of the altar experience that you can have with God, knowing that the blood of Jesus Christ is able to cleanse you and forgive you of your sins and make you a new creation in Him. Hallelujah. And I want to live a closer walk with the Lord. 
You see, I have no desire to continue to carry on in old vain repetitions. I have no desire to carry on in man-made traditions and ideas. You see, what man-made traditions and ideas are are those, those times when people will look and they, they may look at a specific family. And when, sometimes when you have that family name, you know, and when you begin to look at somebody and their great-grandpa was nothing but a drunk and then the son was nothing but a dope addict and the son, uh, you know, the, of, of them is, is nothing maybe even more. And we look at that and, they, and we might would say in our flesh, we might would say, well, that family never has done anything and it has been a generational thing. You see, but I'm believing here today and I'm declaring the deliverance that comes through the blood of Jesus Christ that the blood of Jesus Christ is able to save even to the uttermost. It's able to break the curse upon man's heart. It's able to break the curse of sin upon their life. Hey, because there is life in Jesus Christ. There is a newness that comes to the believer when they accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Jesus came to preach the gospel. He came to declare deliverance to the captive, and we need to be doing the same thing. Amen. So I've got no desire to continue believing that God can't do what he said he could do. I have no desire to dwell in the 70s, the 80s, the 90s, the 2000s, 2010. I have no desire to live in the past. Amen. Because a lot of times all we do when we live in the past is we're putting the power of the Holy Ghost in a box. Come on. All we're doing is we're putting the power of the Holy Ghost in the box. And we're saying, well, this is, this is the confines of how he worked in those days. Can I tell you that he is in the last days? The Bible declares, he said, saith God, he said, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And that's what we're getting ready to celebrate here. It just next month in the book of Acts chapter number 2 about how they were in the upper room. They were in one accord. And they were waiting on the promise of the Father. And Jesus declared, he said, it's expedient that I go away. He said, but I'm not going to leave you comfortless. He said, but I'm going to send you another comforter, which is the Holy Ghost. Ain't you glad that we've got the power of the Holy Ghost? So I don't desire to dwell in the past. I don't desire to live by traditions of men. I have no desire to lead this church based on my personal feelings or even based off my own personal emotions. We've got to come to the realization when we're talking about leadership, it has to be God's way, not our way. It can't be about our four and no more. It has to be all about God. If we want God to bless and use us, it has to be God's way or no way. Why does it have to be that way, preacher? Because no other way will work. There's a lot of people today living in a life of sin because they're living their own way. Well, praise the Lord. There's a lot of people living the ways that they feel like in their heart is right. But can I tell you today, all that matters is what the Bible, what the Word of the Lord says, and what the Word of the Lord declares. That is all that is going to be left standing in the end time. Amen. Because Jesus declared that heaven and earth would pass away. He said, but my Word shall not pass away. His Word is forever settled. It's always for eternity into eternity. And I believe with all my heart it was just like the other day that God spoke to me and he said, I've placed a standing order in your heart to keep the vision. We've got to keep a vision in front of us. We've got to keep the vision in front of this congregation. We've got to have a vision because you know what the scripture declares that without a vision, the people will perish. We've got to have a vision for reaching the souls that need to be saved. We've got to have a vision for the harvest. We've got to have a vision to nurture and feed and nurture the flock of God. We've got to have a vision to do the things that God's called us to do. And if we begin to get idle and if we begin to get weary and we give in and we give up, it's a scary thought to be in a position to where you might miss heaven. 
Amen. But ain't you glad that today we can walk out those doors and we can have confidence and we can have assurance inside of us knowing that we've got victory in the blood of Jesus Christ, knowing that we're saved and that we're born again because of what Jesus has done inside of our heart and inside of our life. I don't desire to live on the fence. Come on. I don't desire to live on the fence. The Bible said that no man can have two masters. He'll love one and he'll hate the other. You can't hold to the world and hold to God at the same time. It will not work. The Bible said a double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. We got to have a ready mind that is stayed upon the knowledge of the Word of God. We got to have this thing inside of us that drives us and causes us to want to dwell in the presence of Almighty God. We got to have a longing to make heaven our home. Can I tell you that the kingdom of God is within us even right now as we're seated together in this house? The kingdom of God is within us. But I'm telling you one thing I'm going to a place that John the Revelator talked about where there was going to be no more death. There was going to be no more pain. There was going to be no more dying over there. Amen. But we're going to a place where Jesus Christ himself shall light that city. Come on. And there's not going to be any more trouble up there. And that's what we got to do. We got to have a heart of determination that we above all are going to make heaven our home. You got to make Jesus a priority in your life. Some people will come to the altar, they'll get saved. Some people will come to the altar and they'll get delivered. They'll come back on the next Sunday and they're bound by something else or maybe even something worse sometimes. But can I tell you what we need to do? We need to just begin to declare that we are free by the blood of Jesus Christ that God is able to save us. He is able to redeem us. He is able to help us to stay free and keep ourselves free. You say, I get tired of the devil riding me. Get the saddle off. Amen. Well, praise Jesus today. Quit letting the enemy put just anything and everything upon you. We've got to stay free. We've got to stay and stand fast in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free. Scripture declared, be not again entangled with the yoke of bondage again to fear. Come on, we've got to stay free. How many likes to stay free? I'll tell you what, when you stay free, when you stay free, oh, it just makes your steps lighter. When you stay free, it keeps the joy of the Lord flowing down in your soul. When you stay free, it helps you to keep a song inside your heart. Amen. Making a joyful noise unto the Lord, singing unto him a new song, rejoicing with a voice of triumph. Hey, listen, we need to get to the point that we're going to say, God, I want to desire what you have for me in my life, and I'm not going to turn loose of you, Lord, until you bless me. Until you've got me where I need to be. Can I tell you today, we've got to make the vision plain. In leadership, you've got to make a vision plain. You as the laity of the body of Christ, you've got to go out here and you've got to keep this vision in front of you. And you've got to be about the Father's business at all times. You've got to guard your mind. You've got to guard what you're interacting with. You've got to guard your speech. Come on. Oh, yes, you got to guard the tongue, the tongue that is hard to tame. Amen. Come on. Somebody ought to say praise the Lord. We got to guard all these things, and we got to go out here, and we got to do what God is calling us to do, and we got to keep that vision out in front, and we got to be mindful that all around us that there is souls, there are people that are struggling, there's people that are hurting, there's people that are confused, there's people that are oppressed, there is people that are depressed. There's people that are, I hate to say it, but possessed. Come on. And oh, if we can just get enough of the power, if we can just kind of be like Moses, if we can just get to a place to where we can find God, if we got to go to the mountain or if we got to stay in the altar of the church or wherever it is, we need to have an experience with God like no other. You see, you can't depend upon me to have an experience with God for you. 
Well, praise the Lord. You can't depend on me to get you close to God. I can't depend on you to get me close to God. I know that the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much, and I know that we can pray for each other, and those prayers do encourage us, and they do strengthen us. But if I'm not willing, there's nothing that can be done for me. You see, what we need today in leadership, we need willing hearts. We need people that are willing to stand up and say, Lord, here I am. Lord, here I am. Not in a bragging or in a prideful way, but in a way of humility of just saying, Lord, here I am and I want you to use me. Even if it is to clean the toilets in the church. Come on. There's a lot of people that I know that are called to preach. Amen. And for some reason or another, they've got this mental complex that they've got to have a pulpit to preach. Well, I'm going to tell you, Jesus didn't have many pulpits that he preached behind. But Jesus would go out here and he preached this message of deliverance to the captive even in the streets. And why should we not be the same way? Why should we not be willing to say, Lord, I'll go where you want me to go? You know, I think about Jonah. Come on. You know, God told him to do something, and what did he do? He got on a boat and went in the opposite direction. And that's how some of us are sometimes. God tells us to go this way, and we say, nah, I think we might ought to go this way. And when we go the wrong way, we end up in the belly of a fish. Amen. And we end up in a place that we don't need to be. But can I tell you that if you learn to be faithful over the small things that God himself will make you ruler over the big things, you've got to trust God with this thing called leadership. In the book of Habakkuk, chapter number 2, in verse number 2, speaking of the vision, he said, And the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain upon tables that he may run that readeth it. You see, there's something about when the vision is given. We don't need to just sit there and think, well, I, I need a couple weeks to pray about this. We're like that sometimes, ain't we? Oh, y'all are getting quiet on me. Come on, we need to turn that microphone on up there so we, even our online audience can be able to hear the amens. Come on, sometimes we, 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 we get the vision and we think, well, we're going to have to pray about it for a couple weeks or we're going to have to fast for a couple months. Some of us can't fast for a couple days, less than a couple months. Amen. Jesus looked at, at the disciples there when he went into the Garden of Gethsemane to pray. And he told them, he said, you stay right here and you wait and you watch. And he said, I'm going to go ahead a little bit further and I'm going to pray. But when he came back, he found them sleeping. And he said, could you not even just watch with me? And sometimes that's how we are as the church. But thank God today that our strength is not inside of us. But our strength comes through the power of the Holy Ghost. And what sometimes that we can't do when we are weak, if we'll just crucify this flesh, if we'll just get in this holy word right here that will teach us and lead us and guide us in all manner of truth, you will understand that when you begin to read this word that it is the bread of life because Jesus declared that he was the word. There's three that bear record in heaven. God the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. Ain't you glad that Jesus is the living word? He's the bread of of life. We can partake of this word, and I believe it is nourishment to our spiritual man. It can help us to be strong. We're stronger than what we give ourselves credit for sometimes. What we got to do is we got to conquer this flesh. We got to conquer the things that cause us to starve and crave after the things of the flesh. And we've got to, above all, in these last days, we got to live righteously and soberly in this present hour. Because God is calling us to another level with him. Look at your neighbor and say, keep the vision in mind. Keep the vision in mind. 
Amen. This week I could hear the Lord speaking and leading me to seek for a greater anointing. We need to seek after the things of God. Can I tell you today that you have not because you ask not? Come on. And that's in all things. You have not because you ask not. This word, just as the Lord has spoke to me, this word is just as much for me as it is for the church of God that is seated here in this auditorium today. We need to seek a greater anointing. We need to begin to realize that it's not by might and it's not by power, but the Lord declared it was by His Spirit. We need an abundance of, oh, of the Spirit of God dwelling and working inside of our lives. Look at your neighbor and say amen. We together as the church will have many hard challenges ahead. Can I remind you today that we're not warring against the Boy Scouts? Amen. We're not fighting with the Boy Scouts. We are in a war with what the book of Ephesians chapter 6 verse number 12 declares as principalities, as powers, as rulers of the darkness of this world and against spiritual wickedness in high places. Some might say, preacher, what is principalities? Those are the rulers of those of highest of ranks in Satan's helpers. The powers are the ranked Below the principalities, the rulers of the darkness of this world are those that are at work carrying out the instructions of the powers. And the spiritual wickedness in high places might could be referred to as the demon spirits that are in operation and work in the lives of other people. May I remind you today of what the Scripture declared that we're not fighting against flesh and blood, but we're fighting a spiritual enemy that can't be seen, but he can be felt. And sure, we have this path of deception and this path of destruction that we can see. But can I tell you, we win the fight by one thing, by putting on the whole armor of God that we may be able to stand against the very wiles or the tricks of the devil. You're not going to win it any other way except God's way. When we think about leadership, we need to examine ourselves. We need to be careful not to go out into battle unless we've got on the armor that God has called us to put on. And he said, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand. Can I tell you today that God desires for us to stand? But can I tell you that there are times that we as people are going to get knocked down. But when we get knocked down, what we need to do is not get up crying. But you know what we need to do? We need to get up swinging. And we need to get back in the fight because we don't have time to waste, because Jesus is coming very soon, and we're praying today, even so, come, Lord Jesus, rescue us, deliver us out of the mess of turmoil that we are in. I'm almost finished. Scripture describes Satan as the prince of the power of the air. Can I tell you that Satan lurks in the kingdom of the air? And it's the spirit of Satan that works in the children of disobedience. Can I tell you that all unbelievers are living in disobedience to God? Amen. Unbelievers are living in disobedience. Can I tell you what the Scripture declares? In the book of Proverbs chapter 25, verse 28, He that hath no rule over his own spirit is like a city that is broken down and without walls. When it comes to the anointing and the calling of God upon your life, you need to understand that God has called you with a holy calling. 
God has called us. Peter declared, he said, you are a chosen generation. He said, you are a royal priesthood. He said, you're a holy nation. You're a peculiar people. You're to show forth the praises of him that's brought you out of darkness into his marvelous light. We need to realize when it comes to the calling and the anointing of God that we need to nurture that calling and we need to protect that anointing. Come on. We need to be making sure that we're not selling ourselves short, but that we are ready in these last days, in these last moments, in these last hours of time that we are ready to stand and having done all to stand, that we are ready to go when the trumpet of God does sound, that we're not going to let anything hold us back. We used to sing a song back home that nothing can hold me here because I'm headed home. Hallelujah. One, one verse of that song says, Some seek for wealth, some look for fame, but I look for Jesus, with him I'll reign. I'm just a pilgrim here, but soon I'll be gone because nothing can hold me here. I'm headed home. I feel good. I feel as light as a feather today. I'm thanking God for everything that he is doing in this church. I'm praising God for the souls that he is saving. I'm praising the Lord for those that he is setting free and delivering from the torments of the enemy. Hey, listen, God is still in the saving and the restoring business. If we'll just begin to put our faith and trust and confidence in him, God is able to do the work. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Heavenly Father, we love you today. God, I praise you. I thank you, Jesus, for what you're doing. God, I thank you, Lord, that you are King of kings, that you're Lord of lords, you're Alpha and Omega. Lord, I praise you, Lord, that you are Jehovah. Lord, you are our provider. You're the one that we can run to, God, and every need you can supply. God, I pray today, Lord, that if there's those that are struggling with different things in their life, Lord, I pray, God, that they would run to this altar this morning. And, God, they would just surrender their life and their heart to you. God, I praise you for what you're doing. God, I just yield to you this morning. And, God, I just declare, Lord, that you would be in control, Lord, of this church. God, I pray, Lord, that you would control me. Lord, I pray, Lord, that you would help me. Lord, help your people. Lord, all those that are in ministry in this church. Lord, all those that are faithful to this church. God, may we be about your business. May we be about the same goal. Lord, of reaching the harvest. God, may we be able to take a step out and say that we're leaders. May we have the boldness to rise up and say that with confidence, God, that we know that we have been received of, Lord, of your anointing. Lord, that you put your anointing upon us. And, Lord, you put a calling upon us. God, and most importantly, Lord, you've changed who we are. Lord, you've made us a new creation. God, if there's souls here this morning that need to be saved, that need to be rescued, God, I pray, Lord, that this word, Lord, that has the power to deliver. Lord Jesus, you are the deliverer. Lord, you are our shining example. God, I pray, Lord, that people would run to you today. And God, they would say yes to you as Lord and Savior. Lord, I pray, Jesus, Lord, that you would work a work in every heart and in every life. Lord, I pray that you'd help us, Lord, to understand that we are nothing but a vessel. And, God, we can be a vessel of honor or a vessel of dishonor. God, help us this day. God, to make our calling and our election sure. God, I pray for all those, Jesus, Lord, that are sick, that are battling different things in their life. God, I pray, Lord, that you would reach down and touch them. Lord, for those that are sick, God, minister to them and heal their bodies. Lord, send deliverance to them today. Lord, in Jesus' name, let this word go forth and not return with a void. In Jesus' name, we ask. If everybody would stand with me. If you want to come to this altar this morning and pray, this altar's open. I'm going to sing a little bit of that song just because I feel good today. I come here to get victory over the enemy. 
And sometimes you need to come to church to do that. I told Brother Matthew, I said, I was feeling pretty low Wednesday night. The devil just attacked me. He had attacked my family. I told my wife Easter Sunday, I went home after we baptized 10 people in this church. I went home and told my wife, I said, the enemy, you might as well get ready. He's going to attack us. On Monday, Annabelle got up sick. On Wednesday, John Luke got sick. On Friday, Courtney got sick. And then on Sunday after church, I got sick. And I tell you what, Wednesday, I just felt so defeated. I thought, God, I'm, I'm just trying to do my best. Here I am, and it just seems like the enemy has just, he's just come in, and he just caused me to feel like I was defeated. And I tell you, it's a horrible pity party when you get like that. But when Brother Matthew got up here, and I mean, he was bold as a lion, wasn't he? He got up here in this pulpit, and he began to preach the word of Jesus Christ. And it's just like life came back into me. We need the Word because that brings life into us. Hallelujah. I feel the Holy Ghost. Shonda to my high. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, praise the Lord. I'm trying to get settled here. I'm feeling good. Thank you, Jesus. Well, some seek for wealth down here. Some look for fame, but I look for Jesus. With him I'll reign. Oh, I'm just a pilgrim here. Soon I'll be gone. Oh, nothing can hold me here. I'm headed home. Well, nothing can hold me here. I'm headed home. Heavenly gates are near. It won't be long until I'm walking on streets of gold. Singing around God's throne, nothing can hold me here. I'm headed home. Listen to this verse. Well, if I should die down here before that trumpet sounds, when they lay my body in that cold, cold ground, oh, you don't have to cry for me. Don't sing no sad song. Nothing can hold me here. I'm headed home. Nothing can hold me here. I'm headed home. Heaven gates are near. It won't be long until I'm walking on streets of gold, singing around God's throne. Nothing can hold me here. I'm headed home. Well, nothing can hold me here. I'm headed home. Heavenly gates are near. It won't be long until I'm walking on streets of gold, singing around God's throne. Nothing can hold me here. I'm headed home. Now listen to me for just a minute. If you got things in your life called sin, it's going to keep you from going home to be with Jesus. And that's not what God wants for you. It's his will for you to be saved today. If you're here this morning and if you're bound by a life of sin, all you got to do is say, Lord, forgive me. Wash me in the blood. Cleanse me, Lord. Accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Hallelujah. And you can sing this song too. If I should die down here for that trumpet sounds when they lay my body in that cold, cold ground. Well, you don't have to cry for me. Don't sing no sad song. Nothing can hold me here. I'm headed home. Nothing can hold me here. I'm headed home. Oh, heavenly gates are near. It won't be long until I'm walking on streets of gold, singing around God's throne. Nothing can hold me here. I'm headed home. Lord, we just give this congregation to you today. 
God, we praise you, Lord Jesus, because you are the true leader. God, we know the scripture declares that you're the bishop of our souls. You're the chief shepherd. You're the good shepherd. Lord, we thank you for who you are. God, we pray, Lord, that we would follow you. Lord, I believe it was Paul that said, follow me as I follow Christ. God, help us as we go forth into this harvest. God, to reach the lost and to reach the souls that need to be reached. God, we keep, may we keep that in mind. Lord, that we're just keeping our eye on you. Lord, if we've got sin, if we've got things in our life that's keeping us from following you, God, may we lay it all down and give it to you. Bless your congregation. Bless your people. Let your anointing, let a freshness of the anointing of God rest upon them today is my prayer. Lord, I love them and I know you do. And I bless them today in Jesus' mighty name. And the Dallas Church of God said, Amen. Come back tonight. Invite somebody to church. Come back and we're going to continue this about deliverance. I'm sorry I didn't get no further than I got with it.